And joining us from Tucson, Arizona, Jason Davis, the digital editor at the Planetary Society. Uh, let me start with the astronauts, uh, Jing Haipeng and uh, Chen Dong. They return, discuss their experience in space. Uh, this is China's longest manned space mission. Talk to us about the significance. Yeah, so this was Jing's uh, third space mission, and uh, Chen was a rookie up until this point. Uh, and as, uh, as you said, this was a uh, more than a 30-day uh, mission to the Tiangong-2 space station. Um, that doubles the length of time that China had spent in space prior to this. Uh, aboard the Tiangong-1 space station, it was only uh, a 15-day mission was their longest mission. So um, by all accounts, this seems to have been a pretty big success for them. And uh, at one point, they also fielded a phone call from the Chinese President Xi Jinping, uh, kind of illustrating uh, the importance of this mission for the government and the country itself. Yeah, uh, it really uh, is paving the groundwork for uh, a future space station that they hope to build uh, starting in 2018 and finishing it, finishing it around 2022. Um, and they had to conduct a, a lot of uh, groundwork for this in both human studies and in technology development. Um, so when you're in space, you know, your body starts to atrophy a little bit, your muscles um, get weaker, your bones get weaker. And uh, they did a lot of experiments, uh, kind of um, uh, proving that they could live and work in space. And then uh, next year, they will launch a cargo ship to the space station that will dock with it and do a fuel transfer, which is similar to the way the Russian Progress Vehicle uh, supplies the International Space Station today. Uh, so, um, you know, uh, what this is doing really is, is showing that they have the ability to conduct these, um, you know, still modest missions, but it's paving the way for much uh, more ambitious things in the future. So, you know, as you were talking, this is kind of a stair-step approach. Uh, I think any space program is that way. Um, where do you see it, it going? I mean, there's been talk about uh, trips to the moon uh, and, and much more. And, it's, and also, if you can, Talk to us about the parallel. The U.S. space program seems to be going in one direction, the Chinese program going in another. Yeah, yeah, they do have different goals. Um, and in that China's uh, robotic missions right now are really focused on the moon, um, whereas uh, NASA at the moment uh, is focused on Mars. So uh, China has already conducted one, uh, oh, a couple missions to the moon, and uh, next year they plan to try a sample return mission from the moon. Uh, and then if that's successful, they were going to try uh, landing on the far side of the moon, deploying a rover over there. Um, that would be a first for any nation. So uh, they're really um, focusing on the moon more than anybody else is at this point. But as far as Mars is concerned, uh, which is where NASA uh, has spent a lot of its interest, um, they will be uh, sending a rover and lander and an orbiter in 2020. It's all the same mission. Uh, that's the same year NASA is sending a sequel to its Curiosity rover. And uh, China's even mentioned that they uh, have some ambitions to do a sample return mission from Mars around 2030. Um, so they really, uh, yeah, they really are starting to ramp up um, their abilities in both the human side of things and the science side of things. So Jason, with a guy who, uh, you are a guy who spends a lot of time with your eye on the sky, what excites you about uh, space exploration at this stage? Well, that's a good question. Um, you know, we've seen a lot of exciting moments in the private industry lately. Um, these private companies have the ability to go out and do um, pretty bold things that uh, government entities like NASA to this date haven't been able to do. Um, for example, SpaceX and Blue Origin private companies here in the U.S. have managed to do upright uh, landings of their, or their rockets, which they think is the key to reusability. Uh, in the future of commercial space flight. And NASA doesn't quite have the leverage to just go out and crash their rockets if they, if they mess that up. So uh, it's been really fun watching um, SpaceX and Blue Origin get up there. Uh, and then NASA uh, right now, you know, they're preparing their next generation launch vehicle, the Space Launch System, um, in a crew capsule called Orion. Uh, right now, uh, NASA is preparing to send that out to cis lunar space, the area around the moon in 2018. Um, they had planned to, uh, you know, keep reaching for Mars in the 2030s with the Trump administration. We aren't quite sure um, where that goal will go or if NASA will try to land on the moon. Mm. But uh, there really is a lot of uh, exciting stuff these days in spaceflight. Well, Jason, thanks so much for joining us from Tucson with your observations. Appreciate it.